Are you struggling to organize your data? Then you are in for a treat because in this tutorial we'll explore Excel's data table feature to unlock the full potential of our data. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I am Ishraq Kader and in today's video we'll be discussing how to create a data table in Excel. In this video, I'll be discussing seven different ways you can create a data table in Excel. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Let's consider the bank statement of Wharton Finances, which contains the investment year and rate of interest columns. Here, we'd like to add another column for total balance and calculate its value for different values of investments. For our first method, the values in the investment column are our variables, while the year and rate of interest remain constant. We'll obtain the total balance using the formula investment plus investment multiplied by year multiplied by the rate of interest. Next, move to the E5 cell, press equal, select the B5 cell, which is the investment. Insert plus, select the B5 cell again, this time insert multiplication operator and select C5 cell which is the year. Again insert multiplication operator and lastly select the rate of interest in the D5 cell. Press enter. Now we'll select from B5 to E9 range. Click the data tab in the forecast group. Click what if analysis data table. Now a data table dialog box appears. For the column input cell we'll select the first value of investment in the B5 cell and click OK. Excel automatically calculates all the total balances for different values of the investments. We can apply the same logic to make a row oriented data table. To do this move to the C7 cell, press equal, select the C4 cell which is the investment, insert plus, select the C4 cell Insert multiplication operator, select the C5 cell, which is the year. Again, insert multiplication operator and lastly select the C6 cell, which is the rate of interest. Press enter. Now we'll select from C4 to G7 range. Go to the data tab. In the forecast group, click the what if analysis drop down and go to data table. Immediately a data table wizard appears. For the row input cell, We'll select the first value of investment in the C4 cell and press OK. That's it. Our total balance has been calculated. In case our financial data has different investment and rate of interest values, then we can use the two variable data table to calculate the corresponding total. We'll use the same formula shown previously to calculate the total. First, let's move to the B11 cell in the formula bar, I'll paste the formula. Here the B5 cell refers to the investment while the C5 cell refers to the year and lastly the D5 cell represents the rate of interest. Press enter. Now select from B11 to F15 range, click the data tab in the forecast group, click what if analysis and go to data table. Since the rate of interest values are oriented across the rows, so, for the row input cell, we'll select the first rate of interest value in the D5 cell. In contrast, the investment values appear along the column. So, for the column input, we'll select the first value of investment in the B5 cell. Now press OK. Eventually, we'll get all the total values for different investments and rate of interests. We can also get multiple results at once by using a data table. For instance, we can calculate the total balance and interest for different values of our investments. For the total balance, we'll use the same formula as before. So move to the E5 cell and paste the formula. Press enter. For the interest, we'll subtract the value in the E5 cell. From the value in the B5 cell, now select from B5 to F9 range, click the data tab, in the forecast group, click what if analysis, choose data table. 
For the column input cell, I'll select the first value of investment in the B5 cell and press OK. In this way, we can get the total balance and interest for different values of our investments. Next, we'll use the format as table option to make a data table. First, select the B4 cell, click the Home tab. In the Styles group, click Format as Tables drop-down. Now you can choose any table style according to your preference. In our case, I'll select the blue table style. In the Create Table Wizard, Excel automatically selects our dataset and checks the My Table has Headers option. This means that Excel treats the first row as column headers. Press OK to format the dataset as a table. Since our dataset is now formatted as a table, Excel assigns a name to each of the column headers. This is called structured reference and we can directly use them in our formula. So let's see them in action. Navigate to the E5 cell, press equal, start square bracket. Here the add the rate symbol tells Excel to choose a specific row in a column. In our case, that is the row 5. Select add the rate symbol. We can also see that Excel is displaying a screen tip with the names of all the column headers in the table. So I'll select investment, close the square bracket, insert plus, then I'll repeat the same process. Select add the rate, investment, close the square bracket, insert multiplication operator, start another square bracket, insert add the rate, this time I'll select the year, close the square bracket, Again, insert multiplication operator, start square bracket, select add the rate, and lastly, I'll select the rate of interest, and close the square bracket. Press enter, and Excel automatically expands the formula to the rest of the cells. For our sixth method, we'll use Excel's table option. Begin by selecting the B4 cell, go to the insert tab, and click the table option. You can also use the Ctrl plus T shortcut keys. In the Create Table Wizard, Excel selects our dataset and identifies that the first row contains the column headers. Press OK. Next, move to the E5 cell and paste the formula as before. Hit Enter and then you will get the total balance for different investment values. Last but not least, we can use the Power Query Editor to help us create a data table. Select the B4 cell, move to the Data tab. In the Get and Transform group, select From Table slash Range. Now click OK to convert the dataset into an Excel table and launch the Power Query Editor. This usually takes a couple of seconds to load. Once loaded, we can transform our dataset from the Power Query Editor. To do this, click the Add Label tab, choose Custom Column. This opens the Custom Column dialog box, where we'll add a column name, in this case, Total Balance. Next, we insert a custom formula. Select Investment, click Insert. Add a plus sign, select Investment again, click Insert. Add a multiplication operator, select the year, click Insert. Lastly, multiply the rate of interest. Power Query has already checked our formula and is informing us that we do not have any syntax errors. So we can safely click OK. We can see that a total balance column has been added. Now let's head back to the Home tab. Click Close and Load 2. This opens the Import Data Wizard. We keep the default selections of importing the data as a table in a new worksheet. So we can click OK. Lastly, we can observe the imported data in the new worksheet. To sum up, we've shown seven distinct methods that you can apply to make a data table in Excel. You can apply any of these methods according to your requirement and convenience. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemi.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye!